We're also here to celebrate Sustainable House Day. That should be a national, uh, not a national, but a national holiday, right? Uh, but it falls on the Sunday, so <laughs> sorry guys, you can't, can't get off. Uh, for Sustainable House Day, it's all about promoting good ideas and also showing people what's possible. And this is what we want to do with tonight. So we saw an opportunity to um, be able to show some of the houses all together, so you guys kind of get the download of information all in one night, and also maybe if you guys were thinking about going out on Sunday, you might be able to see the one you want to check out the most, for that matter. So that is the, this Sunday on the 13th of September. Make sure you register online to be able to get the addresses to where you need to go. So a little bit about Pecha Kucha. Um, Pecha Kucha is really a rapid fire sort of way of communicating ideas. So we're really putting all of our presenters to the, up to a big challenge today because they got 20 slides and they got 20 seconds for every slide and these slides don't stop, right? So I know I'm trying to mount pressure on them, but they'll be okay. But the really big thing about this whole thing is you gotta be supportive of what they're saying as well. So even though it's gonna be quick and to the point, they're gonna give, some, give us some really good juice and, uh, and we hope you leave today inspired or um, wanting to do uh, more in the realm of uh, sustainability, in, especially in the residential uh, sector. So moving on to our next presenter, who is Mark Thomas, who's the architect of Good House. Uh, well, he's a co-founder of Good House, and he's kind of cheating because on Sustainable House Day, because he has two houses open uh, this Sunday. So with Good House, it is a pioneering uh, and alternative design construction system that affords, delivers an affordable, highly sustainable, and quality architectural uh, housing product. Um, we're sure that Mark will tell us some more. And uh, I'll just leave it on to you, if that's all right. <clears throat> Thanks, everyone. I'm waiting, waiting with keen anticipation here. <laughs> ready, set, go. I'm actually going to read. <laughs> it works. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, at Good House we're making, a sustain, making sustainable architecture product a possibility for as many people as we can. We're working hard to balance performance, budget and footprint in terms of both operational and embodied energy costs. We have Good House 5 and Good House 7 open for Sustainable House Day. Uh, Kate and Tim and Pam and Brian would not have ordinarily used an architect and so we were over the moon when they found Good House to be a possibility. Uh, their odd shaped blocks actually needed a more bespoke approach uh, as finding an off the plan design would have been quite a challenge. Uh, Good House is a system not dissimilar to the IKEA kitchen concept, um, but with a bit more scope, <laughs> thank goodness. We can design a huge variety of floor plans and volumes from a set number of elements using a carefully considered design language and palettes of systems, selections and materials. Each good house is designed to be as environmentally sustainable as possible for the site for which it is to be built. Therefore, each good house is different. It is designed to consider the orientation, solar access, shading, ventilation, etc. that the site offers. It's also designed to suit the clients and the way they wish to live. Good House 05 is 191 square metres and is reasonably compact. It needs to be so that the outdoor space is maximised. Similarly, Good House 7, citing response to the existing shed, which isn't drawn, sorry, in the southwest corner, and aims to provide two outdoor living spaces and as much open garden area as possible. Being a hammerhead block, Good House 5 hugs the south boundary and creates much softer entry statement. The floor plan is quite pragmatic and functional. There is a rake ceiling over the north facing living area allowing for effective stack ventilation. A one kilowatt input heat pump drives the, un the hydronic underfloor heating and domestic hot water. Good House 07 is a 145 square metre house. It's two bedroom plus study, one bathroom with second toilet in the laundry. This home is heated by wood fire with heat transfer ducting from living area to other rooms. It's 100% rainwater and all wastewater pardon me, is treated and used on site. With such highly insulated and sealed building envelope, managing the solar gain and shading is crucial as any unwanted sun will have a big impact on the internal thermal comfort. So we try to design 
for full shade at equinox. When there is a when there is fenestration on the east and on the west, these windows are carefully managed with shade and screens. Pergolas and other vertical and horizontal shading devices are often used. The general passive heating cooling principle is thermal mass wrapped with insulation. Insulated slab, R4 SIP walls, R6 ceiling bats and a percentage of thermal mass walls inside to help moderate the internal temperature. I'm yet to see a double brick sleeping bag. <laughs> we default to waffle pod slabs as they provide a level of insulation from the earth and use less concrete than a traditional slab. They work very, very well with hydronic underfloor heating. Our standard finish is medium grind, pour of the day, which is a very, very cost effective way of getting polished concrete, so we've discovered. Structural insulated panels, or SIPs, form the external walls. 140 mils of polystyrene with magnesium oxide board either side. These all but eliminate heat bridging and offer an exceptional seal. You can also see rammed earth internal walls here in Goodhouse 5. SIPs reduce the build time as it is the structure, insulation and lining in one hit. Seven days to install and it's lowered, uh, much lower construction waste. In Australia, households produce about 20% of our total annual greenhouse gas emissions, of which heating and cooling accounts for around 38%. Drafts can account for up to 25% of heat loss for a home. So the seal we can get from a combination of the SIPs and the UVPC double glazed windows is critical to how we minimise the need for active heating and cooling. We have a range of four different roof languages. Both Goodhouse 5 and 7 use the Skillion truss roofs with R6 bats, low maintenance detailing like colour bond wrapped fascias and barges. As every house is designed and detailed in 3D model, we can easily communicate this to the builder. They have access to the model on site and this assists in troubleshooting and limits the need for site visits. It also eliminates much of the risk that builders face when they're trying to price jobs. We are integral to the costing process of these builds. We can use the model to complete accurate takeoffs, taking the pressure off the trades. As most details have been standardised and trades know what to expect when they arrive on site, this ultimately means much, much sharper prices. Similarly, selections and integrated systems have been developed and repeated. Whilst there is plenty of room for clients to drive the aesthetic elements of the build, the bones are largely standardised. This also increases costing certainty and economic sustainability. We have had Goodhouse One monitored for its first 12 months and have gained data of uh, internal and external temperatures. We've also had a few Goodhouse pressure door tested. Uh, we're very pleased with how these places are operating and more importantly, our clients expectations have been surpassed. Uh, I've also been collating completed good house energy bills and it is this that gets me uh, pretty excited. People don't mind sending you their energy bills. <laughs> you can see good house 5 and 7 latest bills here. Without going into too many details, these homes are generating a surplus of power, helping them move towards carbon neutrality and have bills less than one-fifth of the houses in the local area. The last slide is not super high quality, uh, but it shows Kate, Tim, Gracie and Asher, and this is what it's all about. Gracie and Asher are lucky little kids. They're growing up in a sustainable home that works and they think it's normal. They're a crucial part of a much needed change in Australian housing. These are exciting times. Thank you very much, Frank.